the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. Yesterday, The Whistler visited the Jack Benny Program, where Mr. Benny sounded something like this. I'm the fiddler. <laughs> As always, Mr. Benny's listeners had a lot of fun, and so did we. But tonight, as usual, the whistler theme by the real whistler will sound like this. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. I am the Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, rated by Independent Research, the most popular West Coast program. In gasoline, you know, it takes extra quality to go farther. And Signal is a famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal circle sign in yellow and black that identifies Signal service stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story, Masquerade. There was a strange, tense silence in the room, broken only occasionally by the sound of the whirring roulette tables downstairs and the muffled cries of the croupiers. Sam Baxter was serious this time, deadly serious. Irene could tell it by the nervous habit he had of blinking his eyes, cold, gray, heartless eyes, stabbing at her now as she sat in the chair across the room. It was like Sam, she told herself, to tackle it this way. To sit there quietly for minutes on end and let the silence work for him. He was almost ready to scream when he finally spoke. You've been hitting it pretty lucky, Irene. How much you win tonight? Go ask your cashier. I hate to see that. Gambling's an awful vice. Don't want to encourage you. I've made a pretty good living at it. i got no complaints. From now on, you can make your living somewhere else. What does that mean? It means you're barred from the casino. It's from now on. Is that why you called me up here? Yeah, I got a little advice for you, baby. You better hit the road. The town's no good for you no more. If I want advice, I'll go to a lawyer. Well, you can save yourself the time. I'm giving it to you now for nothing. I'm going to treat you right, Irene. Yeah, there's a set of railroad tickets with a little expense dough. The vacation's on me. Well, that's a funny way to look at it, Sam. I'm making money for you, bringing in the suckers, doing my job. That's got nothing to do with it. What is it, then? I think a lot of my kid brother, Irene. What's Joe got to do with this? Plenty. He's a sucker for dames. Listen, you... Ah, shut up. I'm telling you, he's a sucker for dames. Had to get him out of one spot before, and I'm not going to let it happen again. With you or anybody else. He's old enough to know his own mind. Where do you get off telling me how to run my personal life? Like I said, baby, the town's no good for you no more. You're taking the train tomorrow. What does Joe think of this? He likes it okay now that I explained it to him. Now listen, Sam, get this through your thick head. I love the guy. I'm on the square. Ah, well, forget it. He doesn't love you. You've got a lot of crust, Sam Baxter. I'm going to see what Joe has to say about this. Wait a minute. Don't be surprised if Joe acts like he's cooled off a little. He's done a little thinking this afternoon. And to remind him of a couple of things. Like what? Another dame like you. Rumpling his hair with one hand and counting his dough with the other. Why, oh, you low-down, cheap double Why, Watch it, baby. I don't take that from nobody. Now, go on. Go on over and see him. He'll tell you where to get off. You might be surprised. And, uh, Irene, 
Yeah. You forgot something. Your train tickets. You can keep them. Better take them, baby. Vacation might even be good for your health. Yes, Irene, Sam hates you. As you leave the casino and walk toward Joe's apartment, the cool night air clears your head, and you realize how afraid you really are. How easy it would be for a man with Sam's power to snuff you out like a candle. Joe is alone in his apartment when you arrive. And the minute you see his face, you know Sam has put the the fear into him, too. Joe. Joe, darling, what's the answer? I don't know, Irene. I'm not going to leave you, Joe, not now. Nobody's big enough to separate us, not ever. Irene, darling, I... Oh, I love you, Joe. I love you so much it makes me sick inside. Oh, hold me, darling. Hold me close. Nobody's ever going to keep us apart. Irene. What's the matter, Joe? Irene, you don't know Sam. He's too big for us. He gets what he wants. There are guys working for him clear across the country. He can't be everywhere. We'll leave the country. Anything so long as we're together. I don't know. I don't know. There's no other way, Joe. If you stay here, he'll make a mug out of you, turn you into a criminal. You'll spend the rest of your life dodging the police and around the stir on the lamb all the time. That's no way to live. Oh, we've got to try, Joe. We've got to try. Joe. Whose gun is this on the table? It's mine, Irene. You see, he's got you carrying a gun already. Oh, Joe, if you love me, you've got to do it now. Here, Joe, sit down. What are you... Please. All right. Here's a pen, paper. Go ahead, Joe. I want you to write a note for me to Sam. But Irene, you... Please, please. Say this. Um, Dear Sam. Okay. Dear Sam, I've thought it over, and I've decided I can't go on like this. So I'm picking the only way out. Irene and I are in love. I can't do it, Irene. Why not? You? Not now. This isn't the time for it, baby. What do you mean? Look, you go ahead like Sam says, see? I, I got some things to clear up here. I can meet you later somewhere in a couple of months. Now, and wait then a minute, we'll... Joe. Just a minute. You love me, don't you? Oh, it's not that, but like I said, there are a couple of things... You're I lying wanna... to me, Joe. Listen, Irene... That's what Sam was talking about. No, you got it all wrong. That's what he I... meant, isn't it? You're different now. Sure, I don't count anymore. Forget Irene. There are plenty of other women around. Just listen to Brother Sam. He's the big boy. He's the only one who counts. Everything's great till Sam gives the word, then you sell me out for a dime. It's always been like that, hasn't it, Joe? Hasn't it? And I've been too blind to see it. Oh, now, wait a All minute, right, baby. So you got it. Sam. So it is another day, money, anything, I don't know. You never loved me. You just lied to oh, me. Oh, stop it. Get I away mean, from I... me. All right, Joe. All right. Have it your way. Irene, put on that gun. I'll get out of here. I'll do what the boss wants. It doesn't matter anymore. No, wait a minute, Irene. I will I... I... Prologue of Masquerade, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange tale by The Whistler. Have you had a ride in one of the new 1946 cars yet? Well, I did this evening when a friend gave me a lift down to the studio. And man, was he proud. I was especially interested to hear him brag about the engineering improvements that not only gave faster pickup and smoother speed, but also better gasoline mileage. Because, you know, friends, that's the same thing science did for today's signal gasoline when they upped its power. 
The first thing you notice, of course, is signals quicker starting, it's faster pickup, and it's quieter, higher anti-knock. But if you check your speedometer, you'll find today's signal gasoline also gives you a bonus of extra mileage. For after all, it stands to reason, a gasoline that helps your motor perform more efficiently also helps you get more miles per gallon. And that's why Signal says look to your speedometer for the best proof of gasoline quality. It takes extra quality to go farther. Good reason why so many drivers are switching to Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. And now, back to the Whistler. It's over now, Irene, and it's decided once and for all. Joe will stay and you will go. That's all you can think of at first. After the awful finality of the thing that you did begins to sink in. It happened so quickly, Irene. First his fumbling excuses, then the doubt. A few seconds later, the blinding flash of hysteria. The gun in your hand, the shot. And Joe lying at your feet still and silent. Then you start out of the apartment, and your eye falls on the note on the desk. Dear Sam, I've thought it over carefully, and I've decided I can't go on like this, so I'm taking the only way out. Irene and I are in love. Why, it sounds like a suicide note. Yes, like a suicide note. Quickly, you pick up the gun. Wipe the fingerprints off of it with your handkerchief. Press it into Joe's limp hand and let it fall to the floor again. The handkerchief again now. On the doorknob, the fountain pen, everything you touched. Then quickly out of the apartment, into the service elevator, through the alleyway and into the street. You remember now with immense relief that the night clerk was asleep when you came in. That no one saw you leave. A half hour later, you walk into your apartment house. The clerk looks up as you enter. Now, Mr. Carney, you have a visitor waiting upstairs. What? You didn't let him into my room. Oh, it's a man. It isn't a man, miss. It's a young lady, an old friend of yours. She didn't leave her name. Who's here? Who? Oh... Mitzi. Hello, Irene. I thought you were in Las Vegas. Nobody stays in Las Vegas forever. Just passing through? I don't know. I might stay a while. You seem to be doing all right, darling. Nice place you got here. Nothing like a job with Sam Baxter, is there? Why do you say that? Take it easy, baby. I'm not going to bite you. Something wrong? What are you doing here, Mitzi? Just looking up an old friend. You know, if this was Las Vegas and I was you, you know what I'd do? Missy, I'm sorry, honey. I'm just not in the mood. I'd moment. offer me a drink. How about it? All right. All right, Missy. What'll it be, ginger ale or soda? It's ginger ale, thanks. I uh, dropped in on Sam Baxter this afternoon. Oh? He tells me you're taking yourself a vacation. He talked about it. Good idea. You need one. Think so? I know a case of shakes when I see one, and baby, you got them. Sam got anything to do with it? No. Sam has nothing to do with it. Here's a drink. Thanks. Here's to you, darling. Oh, I uh, forgot to tell you I'm staying here tonight. Oh, now listen, Miss. Not Pitt. another word, darling. No trouble at all. I'll sleep on the couch. You'll never know I'm here. You can get a room at the hotel. They're all fixed up. I checked him an hour ago. Just be for tonight, so don't worry your little head. Mr. Darling, I want to be alone tonight. I, I, I don't feel well. You have got the shape. Still liquor down the front of your dress. Oh. Oh. Wipe right off of the handkerchief. Got my handkerchief right here. My handkerchief. Where is it? I... I left my handkerchief. In. Here, here, use mine. What's the matter with you, Irene? You look like a ghost. Nothing, nothing. I, it's just... It was a, 
Nice handkerchief with my initials on it. Get it. I'll buy you one tomorrow. Better let me put you to bed, baby. You got yourself a case of nerves. Well, Irene, what about your handkerchief? As you lie in bed, you try and tell yourself you must have dropped it on the street. That the chances are against anyone finding it where it would do you harm. But every time you close your eyes, you see it lying on the floor of Joe's apartment, where Sam is sure to find it. It seems like hours later when the phone bell cuts through the darkness like a knife. Yes? Irene? Yes? This is Sam Baxter, Irene. I hate to wake you up like this, two o'clock in the morning and everything. What do you want? Why are you calling me? You know I am calling you, baby. Oh, listen, Sam, I'm sleepy. I don't want to play games. I always told Joe a dame was going to get him sooner or later. Why'd you have to do it to him, baby? The beef was with me. Do what to him? Kill him. Kill him? Well, Sam, Sam, you're killing You know, I could almost believe you if I didn't know you better. But tell me, what's this all about? What do you mean? I mean someone shot Joe tonight with his own gun. Joe dead? Oh, baby, you're great. You're terrific. You ought to be on the stage. Yeah, he's dead. There's a suicide note in his desk. In his own handwriting. Everything's ready for the cops. If he wasn't my kid brother, I'd call it a wonderful job. Listen, Sam, I had nothing to do with it. You were going to see him tonight? Well, I, I, I called it off. I, I told him later. I... I'll give it to you straight, Irene. I think you killed him. I ain't sure yet, but I got ways of finding out. If I'm right, you won't have to worry about the police. Listen, Sam. You listen. You won't have to worry about the police because I'm going to let them think Joe committed suicide. So I can take care of you myself. Might happen in a taxi. Maybe in a crowd on a street corner. Maybe even in in bed some night when you're asleep. But you won't have to worry because you'll never know what hit you. Get it? Sam! Sam, please listen to me. That's all, Irene. So long. All you can think of is the lost handkerchief. And what will happen if Sam finds it? You're wondering now, imagining things, fighting the desire to run. And then you discover you're cold and walk to the closet for your robe. As you throw it around your shoulders, your eye falls on something white sticking out of the lining of the fur coat you wore tonight, just below the right pocket. Handkerchief. He's in my coat all the time. You take one look at the blood stain on the corner and decide to burn it right now. Quickly, through the side door into the kitchen, you touch a match to some papers in the incinerator and throw the handkerchief into the blaze. And gradually feel better as you watch it go up and smoke, and then a door closes in the other room, and you remember Mitzi. She's still asleep on the couch. Or is she? You wonder how she could have slept through that ringing phone. If she was watching you as you burned the handkerchief. Wake up, Irene. Irene, it's 9.30. Irene. Oh. Oh, yes, Missy. Getting late, darling. Gonna have breakfast? Oh, go on, Missy. Leave me alone. Get yourself some breakfast in the kitchen, then run along like a nice kid, will you? What about you? I don't want any breakfast. I don't want any. Going out. You sit in the coffee shop now, trying to choke down a piece of toast with a morning paper in front of you, carrying a small article at the bottom of page one on the suicide of Joseph Baxter. That's all. Four or five lines. Just another suicide. Nothing more. 
But over and over again, inside your mind, you hear something else playing like a phonograph record. Maybe in a taxi. Maybe in a crowd on a street corner. Maybe some night while you're asleep in bed. Maybe and you know bed. how short your time really Maybe is. That perhaps right now he's making up his mind how it's going to happen. You know now you're going to have to run for it, Irene. No matter how useless it might seem to try to run from Sam Baxter, it's your only chance now. Why, yes, miss. Of course we can dye that blonde hair any color you want it. It just seems a shame. Black. I want it black. And we'll change the arch of your eyebrows like this? That ought to do it. Go ahead now and hurry. Oh, why, why, yes, we can, we can fit you to a pair of horn rim glasses. Your eyes are in pretty good shape, though, and I'd hardly... I'm them... buying them. Go on, make them up. I want a pair of spike heels. Oh, uh, hi, miss. They run all the way up to four inches. That'd add a couple of inches to your height. <laughs> Not so good if you got a short boyfriend. I'll take a pair, size five and a half, and never mind the boyfriend. Hey, you're just in time, lady. Right up here. Two cars forward. Oh! I hope you don't mind my sitting next to you, miss. It's nice to have someone to talk to. Of course, I have my knitting, but even at that, it's a long trip. How far are you going? Montreal. Montreal. My, that must be a lovely city. Regular piece of France, they say, just across the border. This your first trip? Yes, it's my first trip. Well, isn't that nice? Well, we stop up here at Hanford for a minute, and then we'll begin to get some real nice scenery. Then there's a tunnel just beyond there, and then we get into the mountains. Please, if you don't mind. Say, is that a friend of yours up here? No, I don't have any friends. Well, isn't that funny? She turned and looked at you just as if she'd... What did you say? Well, that girl crossed the car a few feet ahead. The one with the yellow hat. (gasps) Mitzi. Yes, Irene. Mitzi is sitting up there on the other side of the car. Just a few seats ahead. It's clear now. Yes. He saw you burn that handkerchief, of course. You realize how stupid you've been. How it never entered your head that Sam would use Mitzi to put the finger on you. Las Vegas, Reno, Tijuana. It comes back to you now. Mitzi and Sam together most of the time. Perhaps even in love with each other. And that's why she came to your apartment last night. Sam sent her there, and that's why she's here now. Might happen in a taxi, on a crowded street, maybe even some night when you're asleep. Might happen in a taxi. Where are we? Hanford, it only stops for a minute. Excuse me. Oh, no time to get Please off. Let me out. Well, I never thought you were going to Montreal. <laughs> You still have a chance, Irene. Mitzi's not sure of you yet, thanks to the disguise. You move down the aisle to the car exit with the commuters, start down the steps, and in one glance you realize how hopeless it all is. There on the station platform, carefully watching each passenger get off, is a big hulking man with a telltale bulge of a shoulder holster under his left arm. You turn back into the car just in time, sick with fear, knowing now that Sam was right. There's no running away. Oh, you come back. I thought you were... I just went back there for a little air. Oh, it does get mighty stuffy in these cars. Sometimes you can smell that smoker clean way back to the observation. What's the matter? Oh, I see what you're looking at. Now, what do you suppose that tough-looking fellow's doing up there? I don't know. 
Maybe one of them survey fellows asking questions. Looks like that's what he's doing with those folks up there. How do we get to that tunnel? What's that? The tunnel you told me about. Where is it? Oh, that's uh, about a half mile beyond Hanford. We ought to hit it any minute now. Well, I wonder what that fellow's up to. Expect he'll ask me what brand of prunes I'm using. Well, Irene, you're praying now that the train will plunge into the blackness of the tunnel before the man, the same man you saw on the platform, reaches your seat. He's moving closer now, almost to Mitzi, stopping at each seat to look carefully at its occupant, then moving backward in the car, closer, and then... The train hits the tunnel, and in that precious moment of darkness, you struggle out of your seat and back into the next car. The train leaves the tunnel and it's light again. You hurry down the aisle toward the end of the train in the observation car. The sound of steps behind you makes you turn. It's Mitzi, Irene. She's following you. You're almost running now. It doesn't matter what the passengers think anymore. As you run through the observation car toward the rear platform, you see her come in the other end. And you know it's up to you now. It's your life or hers. You slam the door. Stand behind it. Open your purse and take out the little 32 automatic you hoped you wouldn't need. All right, Missy. She slumps to the floor. And you turn toward the railing. The train's moving too fast. But you're going to have to jump anyway. Wait a minute, baby. Let go! No, you don't. No, you don't. Oh, don't please. jump on a train today. You... There. As of right now, baby, you're all washed up. The Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending of tonight's story. Meantime, a word about the extra something you get when you have your car lubricated at a dealer-owned Signal gasoline station. You see, Signal dealers, being in business for themselves, do go out of their way to give you the kind of job they're proud to stand back up. It's why, for instance, they take no chances on memory when they lubricate your car. Instead, they check against Signal's factory-recommended lubrication chart which shows every lubrication point on your car. And they use nine specialized signal oils and greases, so each part will have the exact type of protection it needs for long, trouble-free service. But do they stop there? No, sir. Just to make doubly sure not a single part has been overlooked, they check each point again, which is why it's called signal double-check lubrication. Now, that's the kind of lube service you want when today's aging cars have to last until there are enough new ones to go around. And that's the kind of lubrication you get from your friendly, dealer-owned signal service station. And now, back to the Whistler. Well, Irene, there's no use fighting anymore now. It's all over, and Sam Baxter is won. Suddenly, you're weak and dizzy. The sky turns a thickish green, and the floor gives way underneath your feet. When you open your eyes, you find you're up forward in one of the coaches. The train has stopped near a crossing, and some men in white uniforms are carrying Mitzi into an ambulance. You try to lift your hand to your head and discover you can't. It's a handcuff, baby. Handcuff? Why? Oh. New York police, homicide detail. The name's Stone. Police? Oh, you know all about it. I couldn't miss it. Everyone in the car saw it through that window onto the back platform. No, I... I mean about Joe. Joe who? Wait a minute. Why did you come onto this train? Why did you follow me? We weren't following you, lady. We were following that dame you knocked off, Mitzi Rogers. Yeah, and I'm afraid it's going to go pretty tough on you. Still murder, you know. What are you talking about? Mitzi was wanted for the murder of her ex-boyfriend at his office this afternoon. Who was it? Oh, a guy that was giving her the runaround. Gambler by the name of Sam Baxter.
Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Monday at 9. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, who have asked me to remind you to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story was Lorene Tuttle. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen, based on a story by David Kahn, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>